Merle and I just went and rescued some barcinos, some stingless bees here in Costa Rica. Um, we didn't take one of these pre-videos, but we got lots of footage of the rescue itself, so we'll put that right after this. It was a full-on rescue in on the side of a mountain in full sun, and yeah, it was a really good workout. <laughs> we sweat quite a bit. Take a look at our work. I'll start by saying it's always best to leave the bees in their natural habitat whenever possible. This rescue was necessary because this tree had been cut down about five to six years ago, apparently. Um, it was starting to rot. And on top of that, the uh, folks who owned the land there, they were about to light all of the surrounding material on fire. And so there was a high likelihood that the bees wouldn't have made it through that. Even though the inside of the tree was still pretty hard, um, the, there was a need to get them out and get them into a box. Once we'd opened up the stump and removed the first few pots of honey and pollen that were sitting on top of the brood, that it now exposes the brood, which you can see some of the bees running around on up there. Um, and so what I'm doing here is I'm removing the connections that the brood has with the side of the stump so that I can, as much as possible, remove it all as one single piece. It's always better when you can remove it as a single piece. And of course, you've got to be careful t for the queen the um, so that you don't trunk. accidentally injure her or worse. And so it's very time consuming, gradually removing piece by piece very carefully so as not to uh, injure any of the bees and especially the queen. And here comes the first piece of brood. It divided into two in the is end, but you can see in this that piece that some of the freshest brood is at the top and actually that exposed the queen underneath. We got a glimpse of her, her there for a moment, but it's okay, you'll see her again in another minute. She did run away and hide for another few minutes there. Then it was time to get the brood into the box. We've set up a little hammock there to, to sort of cradle the brood so that it doesn't sit on the floor of the box with some duct tape and the brood level that was partially detached, I removed to put back into the box at the next stage. And here she is, the queen. Spotted by Meryl, I then reached in and carefully got her to walk up onto my fingers. And would you just check out how swollen that abdomen is. While we get the rest of the brood out of the trunk and into the box, stingless bee queens swell up like that after mating. And it's actually, they swell so much that they will never fly again. So. Unlike honeybees, where the queen can indeed fly and swarm, stingless bees cannot. Stingless bee queens cannot. And it's always, when they reproduce, it's always a virgin queen that goes off to the new hive mm -hmm. before having Beautiful. mated, and then once mated in the new hive, then that is where she will stay forever. After having moved the rest of this brood into the box, we sealed it up Beautiful. with a few pots of honey and pollen that were the most intact, and we saved the rest to reintegrate into the hive in a few days. Oh, 